Yo, what up everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Phantom Frequency where we get into every aspect of pop culture, man. Music, film, TV, you name it. We talk about it around these parts. Make sure you're clicking the buttons all below the video showing that support. We really do appreciate all the new subs coming in recently, having great conversations. We just did that Bride of Chucky and all that fun stuff. So we appreciate y'all. It's spooky season in full effect, and how can I not have my girl Steph here once again from the Final Girls on the channel. And if you haven't joined us for any of the reviews we did before, I'll toss them up in the corner there. You guys can click on that after this video and check it out. But this is your third time? Fourth time? Third time? Fourth time? I think fourth, yeah, fourth. So fourth time, man. So there you go. The quadrilogy continues, and I got my girl Steph here, and she's the whole reason why we're getting into the topic of today. You saw the thumbnail. You read the title. Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro's classic. Some would say magnum opus, you know what I'm saying? Pale man in full effect, you know? Hashtag all lives matter. No, I was playing. But uh, <laughs> freaking pale man over here. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, no, uh, no politics on the channel. We just like to have fun. But, uh, but yeah, so Guillermo del Toro's horror fantasy classic. For those that don't know, if you haven't noticed by now, on this channel, we've never covered a single del Toro movie for good reason. None of us watch them, especially me. I've never seen any of them. And you're all into the del Toro I filmography. I love del Toro. I'm one of those people that if del Toro's name is on it, I am probably going to go see it. Hell yeah. But yeah, man, so Del Toro is one of those legends, and I've always respected his work, known about pretty much everything he's done. I saw Hellboy, I'm a comic book movie fan, so I'm definitely one of those guys that was just watching all that stuff growing up as a kid, and I liked it. I didn't necessarily love it or anything, never saw the sequel, uh, The Golden Compass, Kingdom, or something like that. The Golden Army, there you go. Trivia. But yeah, The Golden Army, I never really went into that. But yeah, this was my first Del Toro film of all time, like I was telling you the other day. And, uh, or first, or not first, my second. I saw The Shape of Water, actually. Okay. I saw that uh, last year around this time, writing articles and stuff like that for websites and everything. That's another good one. Yeah. It's, which it's, it's really pretty. Yeah, much more of a love story. Much, uh, really good performances, by the way. I forget the lady that won the Oscar for it, but she was really good. Um, but yeah, it's a good movie, but it's definitely much different to this. Nice. So I had a lot of anticipation and hype going into it. She was like, we got to discuss this movie. <laughs> We got to talk about it. This has to be the next one that we're doing. So I was like, all right, you're on. Let's do it. And I got to say, full spoilers, I fucking love this movie. Absolutely blew me away in all the best ways possible. Yeah, it's one of my absolute personal favorites, like, like up at the top um, as far as movies go. Uh, yeah, it's so I was excited when we you asked me, let's watch a horror movie. I'm like... Well, I say most of my horror movies to watch with my girls. However, <laughs> this is one that I think you should get into. Okay. So, yeah, just pretty much start off naturally from where we were. So we were talking about um, how you pretty much are just all in the Del Toro and everything like okay. that. You know pretty much every corner of the Del Toro <laughs> Well, I don't world, know every corner. Much, you know, <laughs> for the most part. I, I don't know if you yeah. watched Pacific Rim or anything. I did not. Th that's one I didn't watch was Pacific Rim. Got you. I did not watch Pacific that's Rim. Not. But I have seen, you know, um, obviously Pan's Labyrinth, The Shape of Water, Crimson Peak, Hellboy, oh, yeah. Loki. Yeah, uh, um, I've seen Opera. I've seen some of his other older works. That right uh, now, what is that? Uh, Mimic? Is that one of them? I think so. Yeah. There's a couple. There's a couple others where the just the titles are getting away from me for whatever reason. Yeah, there's <laughs> another one too. I'm totally blanking on it. But his work is beautiful. His oh, cin yeah. the cinematography on pretty much anything that he has his hands in. But um, Pan's Labyrinth was my introduction to Toro, Del, Del Toro. Got you. And I I love fantasy. I'm right. a I'm a sucker for a good fairy tale and and things like that. So this movie just completely drew me in. And I watched it. I've, I saw it for the first time years and years and years ago. And I don't even remember who I watched it with, where, where I watched it. Yeah. I just remember the movie. <laughs> well, that's all. The, that's the most important part. And being man. completely enthralled by it. It was just... I, I think that was probably it. Is I was so sucked into this movie. It's like... All the other Everything else around it. Matter. Exactly. It was just... See, I have a similar experience with Nightmare Before uh, Christmas, where I know I watched okay. it in either kindergarten or first grade. Wow! But, but I can't like I know I saw it really early in my life, but I don't remember exactly where I was for sure. Mm -hmm. It just felt like I was at school because I don't remember my mom or my parents being there 
or anything like that because my dad would work obviously Monday through Friday. Okay. So I know he couldn't have watched it with me if it was during the week, but it's like I just have that vague memory of watching the movie wherever I was mm-hmm. doesn't matter. I just remember the first time seeing that whole world that Tim Burton and um, that gosh, one will do it to it. you too. I can't remember the actual <laughs> director's name. I hate that. Tim Burton. Uh, no, he didn't actually re- direct it. He actually oh, just really? wrote it. Yeah. Oh okay. I'm totally blanking on That's the name. I'll throw it in there. I just I always like giving him a shout out because he's actually the director and they did it together. Wow. It was okay. really their brainchild together. And it was just so cool seeing the way that that vision came to life. And I was, it was, so it was like late 90s. So this is when the movie mm-hmm. fully had finally taken off because it wasn't a big hit when that dropped. But I believe this movie, Pan's Labyrinth, I think pretty much from when it hit, it was pretty popular, I think. And it's only gotten mm-hmm. more popular as it's gone on. Yeah, I, I uh, think it has a strong years. cult following. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was like a box office hit or any of that. I never really look into that information. That I have no idea. Yeah. I only I, do that with like current movies, you know. Yeah. Because you hear more about it, I guess. But, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But I just feel like this movie really just set him and put him on the map, even as a Spanish film, yeah. as a foreign horror movie. Because that was big in the early 2000s. It was, like, foreign horror films from yeah. France, um, the um, all the ones from Japan, like Grudge and The Ring. Mm-hmm. Which I haven't seen any of those yet. Oh, yeah, right. So future content. On- <laughs> so as I was essentially saying before the tentacle issues had to strike its ugly head once again, I was getting into... How this was pretty much the movie that set Del Toro's career on the path that I think it's on today and really put him on the map. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he did the first Hellboy before this, but I felt like it was close to the same time. And I felt like that's why he got that project probably was because that was his first big mainstream success. Because I don't really think Del Toro was like that big before this movie. Because I think he yeah. did Mimic, maybe one other Spanish horror film. I didn't really hear film. about him. No. Or his, I didn't ever really hear his name until I think until I actually finally watched yeah. For Pan's sure. Labyrinth. So I feel like this is the one. Pan's Labyrinth, that's the movie that set him on the map. Doug Jones, that's the movie that put him on the map. And everything like that. And that's mm-hmm. where, you know, and with Del Toro directing and writing the film, you really get to see his vision come to life and the passion mm-hmm. that that man has for all of his stuff. It always shows. And I just always respected that about him as I kind of discovered him through interviews and things like that. So yeah. just, uh, just the talent that Del Toro has and the creative vision is just unmatched to me. And, I, and we were discussing this yesterday when we were watching the yeah. film that he's very underrated, I feel like, oh, as a filmmaker. Oh, extremely. You know, extremely. like, people respect him, but I just don't feel like he's talked about, like, James Cameron. I don't think he's talked about, like, um, even but James Wan, think, you know, I, a the modern guy. at same time, too, I don't think he's... He wants it or cares about it? Yeah, I don't think his work is as ego-driven or hmm, right. anything like that either. That's it's true. more, he has, he's, he's, he's an artist. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a auteur at, at heart, really. Yeah, and, and that's kind of how art, I look yeah. at his movies. I mean, Pan's Labyrinth is a work of art. Oh hell yeah! It All the be way through in the White House thing, it should be in museums <laughs> and shit like that. Like actually, speaking of museums, <laughs> oh right, yeah, we yeah. can segue into that. She went to the Del Toro exhibit that they did in twenty sixteen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was um, covering his whole filmography up until that point with Crimson Peak. Yeah. I think was the latest. Crimson thing. Peak had just yeah. come out at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, they had the exhibit down at LACMA oh, okay, of, right. of his, that's and it was. had actually, um, his monster collection. Oh, that's So right. it wasn't just, just his stuff. It was, his stuff, stuff. That, it he was stuff that he had owned, that that's he had collected so cool. of different monsters like Frankenstein, a right. bunch of Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Um, oh, man. it was really, really a cool exhibit. And then obviously he had his own things. So he had the dresses from Crimson Peak. He had... Um, the Pale Man and Pan. Oh, hell yeah. How are you not going to have like, those guys? full size, I mean. We got a whole section saved for that discussion <laughs> right here. Yeah. But, man, that's, that's freaking rad, man. I, I wonder if he's ever going to do that again. I I would hope so. Hopefully. Maybe the 20th anniversary <laughs> of this movie or something. Who knows? Right? It's coming up. It's kind of Del Toro, if you ever run across this, please, please bring another exhibit back to LA. I'm there day one, <laughs> brother. I'm there, I'm there day one. I was locked in college, man. I, yeah. You know, education. Yeah, it was a beautiful um, exhibit. I bet. A really beautiful one. Man, yeah. His art just really speaks for itself, man. And just everything about this movie Definitely. is just so rad. But for those of you that are joining us and don't care about mm-hmm. spoilers for whatever reason, this is your warning. We're going to spoil the hell out of this thing. So I'm just telling you now. We're going to tell you all about it. chill about it in the <laughs> comments, but I'm just throwing that out there. I'd like to give you the warning. But now we're going to get into details on the movie itself and just the ballsiness of this movie, oh, man. Yeah. Just, uh, you know. Like, Del Toro doesn't really give a shit when it comes mm-hmm. to that, man. Like, he really makes his stuff really come true. Reminds me oh, of, like, a horror yeah. uh, Scorsese, where his movies are dark and uncompromising. Well, it's so funny because, um, as we're talking about this, it, it reminds me as how 
I let one of my girlfriends borrow the oh, right. borrow it. And I think I told you about it yeah, briefly yeah, yeah. yesterday. Well, where yeah, let the people know. Where yeah. um, I kept telling her, this is not a children's movie. Not a children's movie. And she couldn't get David Bowie's, Jim Henson's um, Labyrinth, Labyrinth out, of out of her head. And I kept telling her, not a children's movie. Beautiful cinematography. Not a kid's movie. You, you Be prepared for a little bit of gore. And she just, yeah, just a little bit. She just would not. It, it just wouldn't get in her head until the, <laughs> she had to turn the movie off at the part where he basically bludgeons the guy's face. The in, death of the bottle. Yeah. Like, and she hey. said she had to. She had to. She stopped the movie and she calls me and she said that she, she had to completely <laughs> reset her reset brain. her brain. And I go, I told you. She goes. She goes. I still was expecting it to be like Labyrinth. I was like, no. I, I told you. <laughs> yeah, Del Toro is not Jim Henson. I'm gonna tell you that. Absolutely even Jim Henson was not. A pretty dark dude, but I mean, Dark Crystal his, didn't even get that dark. Oh my. Literally, no, it's funny. But freaking, but yeah, man, like it's just it's, it's not for kids. And this thing is gory as all hell, man. Yeah. While the the filmmaking is still very subtle and it's very much focused on a story and it has yes. like a overall like um uh a overall um fairy tale that it's telling. It's dark and it's mm -hmm. fucked up like actual fairy tales, you know? We're not Walt Disneying this thing. No. And that's literally what I mean. Not like in a hate towards Disney thing. They literally dumbed them down on purpose to make them more mm -hmm. accessible. This which is was this is how probably know? the brother Grimm would actually want yes. them to be. <laughs> this is what the dude that Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is trying to do, but he's just being <laughs> schlocky about it. I haven't seen this that is one the yet more either. classy version of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's really a true fairy tale, like where Hansel and Gretel, you see her eating the kid or something. Like, yeah. it, it gets pretty intense, like she said, with the guy getting bludgeoned to death when he's getting investigated by, mm -hmm. to me, one of the best villains on screen. Oh, maybe you hate him. Ever, man. Like, Vidal is the worst, man. That guy is absolutely the worst. And I can't believe that mm -hmm. um, uh, Del Toro was able to just write such a compelling villain like that. Like, it made me feel like, even though I haven't seen the movie, like a Schindler's List type thing, oh, where you get yeah, like this I've evil, hated villain. Um, on screen because with Inglorious Bastards you got more of a cartoonish Hitler. This yeah. is more of a real life dictator the way that it really would be. And I love the way that even though he's not technically a dictator, you get what I'm saying. I love the mm -hmm. whole energy that that actor brings to the part. I forgot to get the guy's name. And oh, because you hate him. But he is an he excellent played villain. it perfectly. Yeah, I hate I hated his character. He's the true so monster. Much. Oh yeah. The monsters in the movie aren't even as bad as him. Even the pale man. Yeah. Where I'll say they're pretty neck and neck. Because of what he does, and we'll get into it. Well, my theory too, when when you're talking monsters, I always feel like it was the little girl actually going into her imagination to get away from the horrors that were actually happening in, in her real true life. life. Yeah. yeah, like so many artists do, and yeah. so many creatives, like Ophelia, uh, our main protagonist in the film, played mm -hmm. by uh, Ivana Baquero, very Ooh. very well, by the way. Um, yeah. That's our whole kind of uh, eyesight into the film is Ophelia, who's supposed to be this. Um, legendary princess that comes from this foreign, uh, I mean, um, this ancient time where her soul got stuck on the earth and inhabited a different girl and was reincarnated into Ophelia. And she's the chosen one that has to go into this adventure with mm -hmm. the uh, Fano or Pan, played by Doug Jones, the really awesome looking creature that makes Groot look like a basic hand drawing, <laughs> even though I love me yeah. some Groot, man. This is like just the craziest He's like beautiful. thing ever between the half goat, half man mixed with tree person design that they have for Fano uh in the film is just so freaking awesome man oh, like he's beautiful like the whole introduction to him when you see him in the background and then he turns around almost in like a jump scare style you're like oh snap like where the hell did he come from <laughs> and it's so well done because that's how good the effects were it looked like it was a part of nature and, it, and just the seamlessness of that was so awesome mm -hmm. and the way that Doug Jones was able to learn Spanish the way he did and do it so authentically oh, yeah. you wouldn't think this was a white dude speaking Spanish at all and like, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's plenty of bilingual <laughs> people of all races that can do it well. But it's just you don't hear that in movies a lot. A lot of actors mm -hmm. really don't commit to that level. I feel like other than like a select few, you know. And I think Doug Jones, man, like you can really he see. He's very believable. Yeah, and he won an award earlier mm -hmm. this year for his effect work and his characters over the years at Monster Palooza, and it was well deserved because this guy just mm -hmm. inhabits the character so well, and you you forget it's a guy in the suit. Yeah. And everything like that, and. I'm telling you, if I was a cosplayer like that, this would be on my list to do it and pull it off. Cause, oh, yeah. Man, I've well, never seen it in person, but I would love to. That would be so freaking rad. Yeah, we need somebody to go out there and dress up as Pan. Do it. Do, do it, it now. Do it and send us pictures. And we'll Just give do you it. nothing. 
thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, we will like your stuff. <laughs> Give me props. That's what you get here on the channel. Big prizes. But uh but yeah, man, and just the whole introduction of Fano was just so awesome and just all the times he pops up throughout the film mm -hmm. in order to give her the next piece of the puzzle in order to kind of achieve her eternal life or whatever mm -hmm. he's kind of promising to her. While And I love the way that they play it, too, and the way Del Toro writes the character. You're not mm -hmm. sure really if the character's telling the truth or if he's like an evil like kind of monster or if he's really just yeah. a creepy looking thing that is a good a good uh, creature at heart. So it's like, I like how they keep you on the edge of your seat to the very end with that. Yeah, yeah, because at the very end you see what's actually happening. Yeah, or he was what? testing her, you know? Exactly. And being like, okay, you mm -hmm. chose the right thing, you chose the right path, now yeah. you get to enjoy eternal life with good your family. Good on you for not killing your little brother. Yes, exactly, because <laughs> he was like, yeah, it's just a, pick, a prick, you know? Just stab him yeah. a little bit. You know, biblical stuff. Kill the baby. I mean? Kill him, just, just, just do it. It's like Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem, just spitting on the baby. Just spitting on the baby. <laughs> oh, I was thinking more of a uh, South Park where, you know, kick oh. the baby. Kick the baby. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I got to find that clip for sure. But, uh, man, South Park, how do they do it? How do they get away with it? I don't Blame know, Canada. Hell yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Kyle's mom. All right. But, yeah, man, it's just so good. And, uh, but yeah, just in getting into more of the gore and all that stuff too, like mm -hmm. it's not gratuitous in the movie, but I like that when yeah. it goes there, it definitely goes there. And it's kind of crazy because most well, of the gore and the violence is actually warfare. Yeah. And the thing is, is it's when you see the gore in this movie, it's warranted. It's not yeah. just, let's just get bloody and gory for no reason. Just let's to watch get Jason bloody punch his dude's head off the ceiling. Yeah. It's not blood and gore just to be blood and gore. It, this is the realities of like you just said of war i mean stuff that we can't even fathom mm -hmm. i mean like exactly. the guy when you see see the kid guy the stutterer when you see what they've actually done to him you see his hand is split like uh, way down here half. yeah just like hanging by a oh. thread off of his bone man just sitting there and, he, and he's like it's begging like painful the doctor thinking to put him about out of his misery it. yeah, yeah. And it's just real life shit, man. Like, and it's just like brutal in your face, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a part of the story and it's a part of the world that, mm -hmm. uh, that Del Toro's created and it's being authentic mm -hmm. to, to the story that he's trying to tell. So that's what I love of this movie. And as a horror fan, I love gore. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I love watching Jason punch a dude's head off. It's freaking amazing. But yeah. it is great when you get these kind of films too, which is the counterbalance to it, where you get to see it just really that effective gore mm -hmm. and that effective violence. Even the mom, when she's giving birth to the son, even oh, that, yeah. I think for someone like me that hasn't necessarily seen childbirth, is like, oh shit, like that's pretty effective. Well, I loved it in the it, book. Like, wow. I loved it even in the book when you see the uterus. Yeah, like, like, yeah. I'm like holy shit. Yeah, I was you like, see that's the insane. flow. You see the 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 uterus. You see the 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 ovaries and everything yeah. else, and where you see it, her like hemorrhaging just in the. And the, I was like, because at first I didn't book. get it for a second. I was like, oh wait a minute, that was brilliant. I was yeah. like, now I see what Del Toro was doing. Because all of a sudden, all the pages and all the stuff in the book where obviously the the words and stuff will reappear and disappear as she looks into it. Yeah. It has just, like she said, the ovaries and all that shit just like hemorrhaging and everything. And you're just like, what the hell And is then you that? walk out into the room and you hear mom scream and yeah, just- Yeah, literally yeah. giving birth. So it's like literally mirroring yeah. what's going on in real life and everything. And it's just the way that they use the fairy tale to mirror the, the, the mm -hmm. events going on in the movie and things that you can see and can't see. I just love the playing yeah. with your- perspective on that and it's oh, just it's so well done, done man and it's just so effective but not gratuitous in any way even when mm -hmm. uh the lady uh mercedes played by Mar maribel verdu like cuts the dude's mouth open yeah like his i will admit Joker. i will admit though when she did that it was satisfying oh hell yeah that it was so works. satisfying because we hated him so much <laughs> yeah and throughout the whole film he's just torturing people killing people for no reason even his own men even if they're just mute or hurt for whatever reason he'll mm -hmm. just take them out right quick do a double tap headshot and be done with the whole deal. So yep. no matter what way you look at it, this guy is the absolute worst. He's mean to his wife. He's mean to the kid. He's mean to like, or obviously he's just fucked up to his own men and doesn't mm -hmm. care anything about them. And at one point you even wonder like, what is all this for? Like, what is the purpose of this war even he for He was this very guy? dictator -y. Yeah. He was a, very much, he was very much, He well, he was a dictator. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like so, the emperor or something. Yeah. You know, it's just like this guy that has his own army and his own thing where maybe he doesn't rule the whole world yet, but he wants to yeah and it's just so freaking terrifying in and of itself but just so well done at the same time man and there's no way we're gonna have to get through this thing without giving some huge love to the pale man the coolest freaking horror monster 
I've seen in a while. One of the dopest ones in the 2000s. Just the whole that eyeballs in the hand. That gets me every time. I, I've seen this movie. I can't, <laughs> nice. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this movie. And the whole chase scene. And that, that scene gets me every time when she finally gets the door the door open at the top. At, because the door closes because the the time runs out. Yep. It's like a timed timer. entrance into this so dimension. So when she gets in there and you can still hear him pounding on the, the ceiling. It was just like... Or, or on man. the floor underneath her, you can still hear the pounding. And Doug Jones' performance, man, just oh. so well done and so simple. Yeah, and it's crazy too. I mean, the way he walks. I mean, he has that that zombie, uh, that, that staggering, that Romero zombie yeah. kind of thing going on. Yeah, but and, also reminds me kind of and the of visuals like, in that that area yeah. were crazy too. When you see the paintings of him eating the children, yeah, and then when he eats the um, the fairy. He's like biting their heads off and all that. I was uh, like, hell yeah, man. Well, remember, and it was kind of cool too, because when we watched the behind the scenes stuff and yeah. they wanted it to actually look like the zombie movies. Yeah, they, they hired the guy like that worked the Romero, on it too. Yeah. yeah, the guy that was kind of shadowing um, Savini on the Romero yeah. films. Mm -hmm. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting Savini twice at a, oh, a cool. Boston Palooza. Super cool guy. Um, I actually just ran into him twice, literally for free, and he didn't yeah. charge me anything, which is nice enough to talk to me and everything. That's and I was very just like, cool. super cool. And I actually saw his Night of the Living Dead remake fairly recently. Okay. And the last time I seen him, I was like, yo, man, like I finally got a chance to see that, and definitely one of the best, re better remakes I've seen, dude. Like, I have yet good to see shit. the remake. It's good. Yeah. I, I, I would definitely say it's not better than Romero's, but it's a good mm -hmm. remake. Like, I think it, it, I kind of wish I would have saw that one first mm -hmm. as a kind of like a '90s, 2000 kid myself. Because that was kind of me for Texas Chainsaw and a lot of other films like that. So, okay. you know, sometimes it's kind of cool to check the remake out because you get lesser expectations and then you get to see the classic and then really get blown away. I feel like where you don't have high expectations of the remake yeah. in a sense. So you kind of can take them as their own thing. But maybe that's just me blabbering. But uh, <laughs> but um, what's it called? There was one other thing I wanted to mention about the Pale Man and now I'm blanking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's not you. It's just mm -hmm. me. It's just me having my terrible memory. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. It's also Doug Jones. Yeah, which is Doug Jones once again. And the whole interesting element of that was at first, they were actually going to give it a face, like a traditional kind of yeah. face or whatever. And I was like, wow, how effective, how less effective that would have been. I probably think would've it would have been astronomical been, compared because to what the it is. eye, when he pops the eyes into his into hands. his hands, it's so effective. Yeah, it's, it's like gross. It's like, yeah, it just, I don't know. And then when you see it actually moving and it. Mm -hmm. It and just, the way that he's like this and like looking around and all that stuff, it just makes it more interesting. You can't look away from it, but you don't want to look at it. I think that's like the perfect blend in horror yeah. for me for creatures. You want people to look at it, but be disgusted to look at it, but they can't look Not away. Not look at it. Well, I thought it was kind of cool too, the, the imagery, because obviously this thing is a glutton. Yeah. And so they had it, had him looking as if he was originally extremely obese but lost like all the Got, weight like, so you see suction in the worst way we're, we're yeah we're or he lost the lost yeah lost it because you see the the skin hanging from his from here you see the skin hanging from his chest and mm -hmm. the way his stomach droopy stomach and all that yeah the droopy stomach and even the skin like around his thighs and stuff like that it's just like good. really really I don't know. It, to me, it was just masterfully, like even the jowls and, yeah. and stuff. It was just to me, it was just like masterfully created. It was like yeah. Nosferatu made, made Nosferatu look like he was like a handsome devil. Or something. I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and no hate on Nosferatu. You know, I guess he's got his thing going on, kicking it with SpongeBob and whatnot. But yeah. um, deep cut for those that know, if you know, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Nosferatu. <laughs> That's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, man, so freaking Doug Jones playing that and Fauno, two of the coolest like double performances mm -hmm. I've seen, other than maybe like Mia Goth playing Pearl and Maxine in X recently. That was pretty rad. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. I've seen Pearl. I have not seen X yet. Freaking <laughs> awesome, dude. That's a kick-ass movie. You yeah. guys are definitely going to enjoy that one. That's yeah. probably going to be like the funnest well, reaction. I haven't actually. seen it with the final girls yet. You got to do it because <laughs> it's going to like, yeah. it's intense yeah. gore, but like really cool, fun stuff at the same time. So it's okay. going to be like... A uh, more fun watch, I oh, think. Okay, Not yeah. See, I didn't see Pearl. I didn't see Pearl with the girls. Oh, okay. I saw it on my own. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a well, really well done. Yeah, I it was think really I was good. I like it. But so Ty I'm... West, man, a whole nother level. Don't so, mean to take yeah. from you, Del Toro, but gotta give my boy Ty West some love just for a minute. My man is on another level right now. Might be the best horror trilogy if they get the next one right. Yeah. In a long time, because yeah. it chapter two let me down. Insidious, I feel like it's been up and down. Ooh, Insidious is scary. I'm not a Saw guy. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. It's been a while since we had a series of movies that really hit for me. Even the last Halloween's, I, I was felt a bit disappointed, so. Poor daddy. 
yeah, you know, <laughs> Corey. It was Corey the movie. But anyway, anywho, back Ken's to the Labyrinth. Del Toro greatness. <laughs> back to the Del Toro greatness. Uh, and then just seeing his interviews and stuff of the behind the scenes and the passion he had for it, and just the way that he was able mm-hmm. to visualize and bring everything he had in his head to screen. And when it didn't work mm-hmm. out, the way he was able to pivot and figure it out and make it even more effective than what he originally planned, to me, yeah. is the sign of a true great in their craft. Yeah. Someone that can just adapt to every moment oh, yeah. and still be at their top because of their game. I thought it was, I love the way it transitioned from the real world to the fantasy realm. Seamlessly. It's like, a, oh, yeah. there's no like clash of tones the, or anything. When she, even when she went in with the, the frog. Yeah. Oh God. Makes me sick when you think about it. Dude. Oh, the, the, oh yeah. The Madagascar roaches. and. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Did you Don't worry again? about it. Yeah. Audio. Where, where do you want to start back pick back up at again? We're gonna pick up with this nasty ass frog that I don't want to think about, but I'm gonna have to find the clip so you can see it. It's disgusting. It is absolutely yeah. disgusting. I, I was so glad I was done eating by that point. <laughs> I was like, oh. And of course I, I and of course I gave him green turtle leaves with yeah. a bunch of pesto I was on like, it. Dude. So you know it was like it literally like vomited and like <laughs> this, this, like disgusting. <laughs> In the best way possible, though. But just another reason right there where Del Toro had a whole different thing planned where they were going to go inside the frog and all this crazy shit. And then he couldn't do that, so then he just made a very more simple scene, which I think is much more effective. Sometimes I thought it was very effective because, I mean, being that they put him in that small, small cabin, he looked massive. Yeah. It's got, and, he, and from the shots, it made that frog look like it was so much bigger than her. Mm-hmm. It was that whole Godzilla type of... Yeah type of uh, style of filmmaking. Kaiju. And Kaiju, yeah, which makes sense, too, with Del Toro taking on um, both Hellboy and Pacific Rim. You can definitely mm-hmm. see that influence in him as well. I love how he just wears his influences on his sleeve, but mm-hmm. somehow it's not um, derivative. His stuff always feels like his own thing. Yeah. He reminds me of, like, the horror Tarantino like that. Uh, Tarantino yeah. made Kill Bill, which was, like, this melting pot of everything he loved about film, and it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like this weird hodgepodge like some people do. When they try to like mix things together, you know. Yeah, definitely. So it's it's definitely an art art form in itself, kind of genre blending in that way, and just the cinematography as well by Guillermo Navarro, another Guillermo up in this thing, you know, us Williams, you know what the deal is. <laughs> but yeah, that guy's just I don't know if he's worked with Del Toro before or since, but man, his cinematography in Pan's Labyrinth is amazing. Mm-hmm. Every scene looks great. The CGI looks seamless with the cinematography. Just the whole like muted colors of like the fantasy realm with like Fano and the whole labyrinth itself and just the kind of muted nature of that mixed with kind of the more vibrant, kind of more dark and more hardcore kind of nature of Spain during the 1940s, during this whole warfare and this whole thing going on. It's just so like uh, depressing, but in the best way without it feeling too heavy. You know, you don't feel like you just went through like this life changing experience. Like, you just got scarred by Schindler's List. Like, you just feel like you watched an entertaining it's a heavy movie. movie. Yeah, which it should be, you know, yeah. depend because of the subject matter. But I love the way that Del Toro was able to delve something into that realm, but still make it palpable for yeah. it to be an entertaining thing. So I, I, I always just love that aspect, man. Like, Del Toro definitely is one of the greatest guys working right now. Yeah. And, man, it's just not enough I can say about this movie, man. Um, I mean, <laughs> is there anything that you wanted to highlight or that we haven't really touched on yet? Um, I'm just- because yeah. there's so much there's i know that there's a lot that we didn't i know i mean even issue. like um i did love when um i love the the relationship between ophelia and her mother yeah definitely um, yeah like when she point. got in yeah. trouble and she remember after the frog and she was she was completely muddy and she was in Ruined the bathtub <laughs> yeah completely ruined the dress her mother made for her um but when she's in the bathtub and she talks about how the the captain is, or you know, how how the, how they're how they're they're um, ashamed of her, and she says the captain won't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, so she yeah. says she even basically lets her know that he's the one that's actually ashamed of you. I mean, not so much. She just <laughs> yeah, because she's just trying to make the best living situation that she can for the mm-hmm. moment due to the current circumstances that they're dealing with at the moment. Exactly. You know. Yeah, just sad, man. Like just the whole thing going on with the way that she lost her dad and all that stuff. 
and how he was making clothing mm -hmm. for or the uniforms for the soldiers mm -hmm. in the war and how that's how they all got mixed up in this and how the mom met the captain in the first place and then, <clears> then you see me. how cold he is towards towards her because yeah. as she's talking about how they met and stuff and he leaves her hand yeah hand, like they don't want to hear this and really it's just him that doesn't want to hear it where mm -hmm. everyone else is like oh yeah you know hear the you know the, how they met the type story and then yeah. You know, it just shows you the cold nature of the character up front, right then and there, toward the beginning of the film, without you having to see the dark nature of the character yet, because once you see him, you know he's evil. Well, it's like I even love the part, too, where Merce, I think it's, I don't know if it's the doctor or Mercedes, I forget which one, asks him, how are you so sure that it's a boy? It was a doctor, yeah. And they kept yeah. talking about this, him having a son. Yeah, you're he's right, like, I just know. Doctor. He, he, he like, like looks at him like, like... <laughs> Of course it's a boy, you know? Like, how the fuck would you know, homie? And <laughs> yeah. it's like, damn, well, he was right, though. Yeah, well, he had a 50-50. I know, right? It's like, yeah, right. exactly. You know I mean? but the odds ego. of him being right. <laughs> it wasn't too low, but it's all the ego and all that, <laughs> exactly. obviously, with the character. And he even points that out later, that his pride is his ultimate, like, weakness mm -hmm. and downfall in the film. So I love how he's able to address that yeah. in there, but still kind of fall victim to his own design. But you know? I do love that. Um, how Mercedes basically told him too that this child will know nothing about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll never mention you. You, he'll never know yeah. you even exist. Like essentially, he won't know that you're his father. You know, mm -hmm. and I was he like, won't, damn. He won't ever know his lineage. He won't know any of that. And I don't blame her. Yep. Because now the baby can just live with Mercedes and move on yeah. in his own life his without own. his sister and his original family. But man, that could be like almost its own tale unto itself. And where does that go? You know, where does that leave the brother? in all this so i like how it kind of leaves the door open for even more potential with more possibilities with this with this story but obviously mm -hmm. never gets explored but rightfully so so yeah. i think sometimes movies just need to be one and done and this is definitely a great and I, I love mercedes character yeah she was great man she was she was great and i loved playing the mole. she was yeah she was the mole but she was she had a warmth to her yeah for sure and she cared about ophelia, ophelia. and everyone going on around her and just wanted to get everyone free of this tyranny that they're kind of dealing with in the area and everything like that. Just that true underdog story that yeah. you just can't help but get behind. And you know? she was smart, too. Yeah. She was calculating. She was, you know, she had everything. Yep, she was on top of her game. Yeah. She was on her shit, as they say. And yeah. I just really, yeah, she's definitely one of my favorite characters in the film. The doctor was really cool, too. I did think the mom definitely had a little more note after a while. I did feel like we could have got to know the mom a little more I would have liked it again. throughout the film. You know, that's probably like my only little minor kind of, I don't know if criticism is the right word, but just the one thing I noticed about it. But I mean, that's probably it. Everything else about this movie to me is just flawless and just the best way you could have ever executed the story, especially when it comes to the visuals and the score and the acting. It's just on a whole nother level. So I'm, I'm glad I was late to the game, but I finally got a chance to check this thing out. It's definitely going to be a part oh, of the yeah. collection. I can't wait. I, and, like, yeah. I, I was just so excited that, that I was able to see your reaction yeah, to it. Yeah, in, like, in person. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Like, and I'm a very reactive watcher, so <laughs> uh, I've never done any reactions on the channel of me watching films, but uh, I'm a very reactive watcher, so maybe I'll get around to doing it one of these days. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it was, it yeah. was fun to be able I, This is one of those movies I love to share with other people. Yeah, and see their reactions mm -hmm. and how they process it. Definitely. I'm definitely going to start doing that for my friend. Yeah. My family members I haven't seen the film. Freaking rad. This is definitely going to be one of the uh, coolest movies we review on the channel for a long time. That is for sure. And Discuss. remember, don't don't ever compare this to, to David Bowie, Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Yeah. As much as I love that one as well. But for There's no bulge in this reasons. film, right? Okay. No bulge, just bloodshed. <laughs> just bloodshed, all right? So make sure you're checking this thing out ASAP wherever you can. Mm -hmm. Buy it on Blu-ray, rent it on Amazon, do whatever you got to do. Check this movie out. ASAP. I absolutely love it. I give it a freaking 10 out of 10. It's an awesome hey. movie, man. It's freaking awesome. I wouldn't change anything about it. Even the mom thing, I could let it go because who cares? The movie's good enough on its own where I don't even need to know anything about the mom other than what I do know. Mm -hmm. I love this movie. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out and let us know what you thought about it. And if you do love this movie, tell us about the first time you watched it, how you discovered it. I always love getting into discussions with you guys on the channel about that stuff. Make sure you're jumping over to the Final Girls on YouTube and checking out Steph Yay. and the whole team over there. All the ladies doing the reactions to horror films. They never grew up as horror fans like us crazy guys over here. They are all new to it for the first time. So check out their first time reactions. They do a lot of great stuff over there. They got some convention stuff uh, planned for the future. They got appearances and things like that. So make sure you, find, you follow Steph. And uh, I'll have all our social media stuff below the video in the description. 
follow the final girls so you can keep up to date with what they're doing. We're going to be working on some stuff together, hopefully in the future as well, even on the final girls side, who knows? Who knows? Anything <laughs> is possible, but we always love and appreciate having you on the channel. And Thank I always appreciate you, you coming through I have fun and taking time out of your day, you know, and coming through on the channel. We love it. And the people love seeing you over here. And definitely the Final Girls uh, community has definitely come over and shown some love to us. So Yay. we appreciate that and just want to keep Thank that you. that synergy going and keep it crossbreeding right there. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me, man. I mean, do you have anything else to say about this one before we wrap it up? I just love it. It's the freaking I best. do. I love it. I, yeah, it's I, a dope I, movie, man. Yeah, it is. No bullshit. All killer, no filler. It's a dope ass movie. Pan's Labyrinth. 06. Make sure you're checking this out. Sharing it with all your friends and fam. We got a lot more horror goodness coming at y'all. I'm going to have like at least three to four uh, full-on reviews. I'm going to have a fun ranking I might start working on as well. I'm going to try to get it out by Halloween night. We'll see because the 9 to 5 it is tough, but we are going to make sure we're, we're grinding and getting this content out to you guys. We're covering the Loki series for all my Marvel heads out there. I know the MCU is in a very interesting place nowadays, but the Loki series has definitely been on a good one. We need to get back into that one. You do. You need to do, do. it. Loki season 2 is pretty sick. Yet. So yeah, so we got Loki coming up. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's is dropping this week, so we're gonna have a review for that as well. Go shout out to that. My boy Matthew Lillard's gonna be in that, so that should be pretty fun. It'd and be fun yeah, hell yeah. So yeah. until next time, stay tuned. Don't sleep. Trick or treat. Smell my feet, y'all. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>